This is the big picture, an official television report of the United States Army, produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Master Sergeant Stuart Quaid. Since the beginning of time, man has been devising weapons of destruction. Each new weapon appeared to be the end of the foot soldier. Yet the foot soldier through the centuries continued to be, as he is today, the backbone of every army. What about the latest of man's weapons of destruction? Will nuclear weapons finally put an end to the usefulness of the foot soldier? We believe the answer is no. Because with each new weapon, man has devised new defense against the weapon and has learned to fight and survive. Let us look at some of the weapons of the past that have challenged the fighting man. There was the slingshot, employed by David against Goliath and used as a weapon in the armies of Alexander the Great, who also developed the forerunner of modern artillery, the catapult and the ballista, weapons of intense destruction in their time. The major weapons of antiquity were the great spears of the Greek phalanx, the short sword and shield of the Roman legions, and the broad sword of the armored knights. The adoption of the armor-piercing crossbow about 1100 AD was supposed to have made war so horrible that no man would dare to use it, and war would become obsolete. Shortly afterward, the longbow developed by the British could shoot 20 aimed shots every minute at ranges up to 200 yards. The invention of gunpowder ushered in a new era in destructive weapons, which were cast for centuries in a variety of forms and styles. By the 19th century, rapid-fire weapons such as the Gatling gun entered the battlefield. World War I saw the development of automatic small weapons like the machine gun and the giant artillery piece, the tank, and the aeroplane. In World War II, these weapons became even more potent threats to the foot soldier. But we found, as in the Korean War, that wherever there was land that had to be controlled, wherever there was a position to take or a line to hold, the foot soldier continued to be of critical military importance. The battleground of the future may well be a nuclear battleground. And the nuclear weapon is perhaps the greatest challenge to the foot soldier in military history. The United States Army believes it is a challenge that can be met. And that today's soldier has a chance of surviving this new weapon. Just as the soldier of the past was able to survive the weapons of his day. Today on the big picture, we would like to show you a training film made by the army to orient the soldier in methods for his individual protection against atomic attack. However, many of the methods employed are equally applicable to the citizens of our country in the event of an atomic attack. This is Hiroshima. We've learned a lot about the atomic bomb since this one was dropped. We don't have all the answers, but some lessons are very clear. The atomic weapon, though far more powerful than any killer previously devised, is not final and inescapable. Much can be done to minimize the effects. When the enemy uses this weapon, you who are the troops on the ground must be ready. You can and must continue to do your job.
Understanding the atomic weapon and the defenses against it is important for the frontline soldier. But it is just as important for Luke Smith, who is a crane operator here in this port area. Or for Bill Snowden, a parts clerk at this supply depot. In fact, rear area depots and communication centers may be more attractive targets for enemy atomic weapons than troops in forward areas. Atomic weapons resemble ordinary high explosive weapons in that both explosions are due to the rapid release of large amounts of energy in a small space. Weight for weight, the release of energy in the atomic weapon is far greater than that in the high explosive. But they are alike in releasing their greatest energy in the form of blast. Let's look inside this atomic explosion and see what is taking place. The greatest part of the energy, about 50%, is being released in the form of blast. The direct action of the blast, striking with tremendous force, is particularly effective against almost all types of buildings. Damage to military equipment like trucks and weapons comes mostly from being dragged or rolled over the ground. Armored vehicles, because of their greater weight, are more resistant to the shock waves. Human beings also are very resistant to direct effects of the blast. It takes a far greater shock to injure you than to knock down these buildings. Most casualties from the blast are caused by its indirect effects. Men get hurt by flying bricks, limbs of trees, rocks, or by buildings falling in on them. Of course, if you are standing in the open, you can be picked up and hurled through the air until you come to a sudden casualty-producing stop. We said that about 50% of the energy is released as blast. At the same time, over 30% is being discharged as heat. The duration of this flash heat wave depends on the particular weapon used, but in any case, it lasts a very short time. Traveling at the speed of light, it has line-of-sight characteristics. That is, if you are directly shielded from the rays, they cannot burn you. Anything that casts a shadow will offer some protection. Smoke and fog also cut down heat. Of course, if you are in the open, in clear weather, you may be a casualty from heat radiation. Flash burns are common after an atomic burst. But remember, the heat radiation from an atomic explosion is no different from any other heat. The burns are the same as any other burns. Simultaneously with a blast and heat, the explosion releases a small amount of its energy, only about 15% as nuclear radiation. Except for the size of the explosion, this is the only difference between the atomic weapon and the ordinary high explosive. Nuclear radiation. Is it mysterious? Always lethal? One of those new products the scientists are turning out in the laboratories to menace our lives? Some people think so. But we're often in contact with it. In the X-ray, for example, the kind used under proper control in our physical examinations. You cannot stop radiation completely but you can reduce its effect considerably by shielding. Any object between you and the blast provides some protection. The degree of protection depends on the density and thickness of the shield. For instance, lead, being quite dense, gives excellent protection against gamma rays. But we don't usually have lead around on the battlefield.
Steel, however, is a very good substitute. One and one half inches of steel reduces gamma radiation by one half. Concrete also provides a considerable amount of shielding. So do wood and earth. By adding to the thickness of each substance, we can further reduce the radiation. In an air burst, the radioactive fireball is carried upward and out of effective range very rapidly. The result is that nuclear radiation coming directly from the explosion, that is, initial radiation, is dangerous only for seconds, or at the most, minutes. However, some air bursts may also produce a lingering radiation in a small area immediately beneath the explosion. Surface blasts and those underground also will produce this lingering or residual radiation which contaminates the area for a considerable period of time. This occurs because explosions at ground level or below it suck up great amounts of dirt and rock into the mushroom cloud where radioactive particles adhere to them. Much of the material falls back to earth in the general vicinity of the blast, leaving the area highly contaminated. But many fine particles of the dust will drift away with the wind and as fallout, eventually contaminate a much wider area. This lingering radiation begins to decay as soon as it is formed, so that ultimately, harm from it becomes negligible. The extent of your danger depends on the amount of radioactive substance which has fallen out in the area, how much time has elapsed since the explosion, and how long you remain in the area. We've seen the principal effects of the atomic explosion. Blast, heat, and nuclear radiation. Keeping in mind that your first priority, as always, is to perform your assigned task, now let's see what protective measures you can take against an atomic attack. Largely, the precautions are the same as you would take in any high explosive attack, applying the lessons you learned in your basic training. If learned well and practiced, these will put you in the best position to survive and carry out your mission. Prior to an atomic burst, perhaps your most basic defense is to keep as much of your body covered as possible. Clothing should be worn loose with sleeves rolled down. Loose clothing has air space that gives good insulation from heat. Although it cannot shield you from initial radiation, it will protect you from heat. These men have no protection against heat. They're inviting severe burns. Whereas these men have considerable protection. Field clothing is being developed to give you improved protection from both heat and nuclear radiation. Protective salves are being developed to cover exposed skin. By all means, dig in. Whenever the situation will allow, dig yourself a foxhole, and as time permits, improve it. For best protection, cover it with good substantial timber and earth. Keep the silhouette low for camouflage purposes. You recall that earth provides good shielding from nuclear radiation. The thicker the earth shield, the better. For atomic defense, you need a deeper hole than usual. Have a minimum of three feet between ground level and the top of your body in crouching position. The sides may crumble, but this foxhole will give you very good protection against flying missiles, heat, and radiation.
This applies even when barely close to ground zero. Of course, your best defense against an atomic attack will always lie in seeing that this enemy does not find you. Effective counterintelligence, including camouflage, is most important in denying the enemy target information about your area. One man's indiscretion, when captured, can give the enemy just the needed clue. Improper concealment of your positions can show up quite clearly on enemy aerial photos. Poor light discipline at night. All these mistakes help the enemy complete his intelligence picture and locate you and your unit as lucrative targets. But almost as important as avoiding attack is to have forewarning when one is coming. How quickly we complete our intelligence picture of the enemy and what he is up to depends on you. Your proper handling of prisoners of war, your prompt reporting of all captured documents. Report any activities by the enemy, his use of protective clothing and other special equipment. His voluntary withdrawal along any portion of the battle line, such may indicate your own front as an atomic target. When his attack comes, we need alert observation to pinpoint the enemy. This and a good warning system can buy time to spread the word and take cover behind earth, behind steel, or if you're in a built-up area, behind concrete. If your only shelter is an open foxhole, stretch your poncho or whatever is available over it. You've already heard that cloth gives considerable protection against heat. If you don't have a shelter or can't get to it, take advantage of the best cover available, a fold in the ground. Or a ditch. In a building, get onto something substantial. A counter or desk will protect you from falling debris. In case you're in the open where you can't get to any covered position, hit the ground wherever you are and cover the exposed parts of your body, even if you have no warning before you see the flash. True, heat travels at the speed of light. Its effect is instantaneous. However, with some weapons, it is of such duration that by immediate action, you can escape some of its effects. Cover your eyes. The flash has many times the intensity of sunlight and can blind you temporarily, from five to 15 minutes. At night, this blindness will last longer, and there is a chance of permanent injury to your eyes. The blast wave travels at about the speed of sound. Wait until it has passed before you get up. You'll have no difficulty determining when it has gone. After the attack, your first action is to continue with your assigned mission. However, do not leave your position until told to do so. Without knowing it, you may move into a highly contaminated area. Of course, check your weapon for proper functioning. Check your communications. You must establish immediate contact with your leader. If he is a casualty, you may have to assume command.
Following closely on his atomic attack, the enemy will probably launch a ground attack. You must be ready for action to prevent being wiped out by rifle or bayonet. In parts of the area, a great deal of dust and smoke will be lingering from the explosion. Where breathing is difficult, a handkerchief tied over your face will be helpful. Or a dust respirator. A protective mask might also be used. There may be numerous casualties from the atomic attack and not enough medical aid men to go around. Your standard first aid procedures promptly applied may save many lives. Bleeding is a primary concern. Know how to apply a pressure bandage. And you may have to apply it to yourself. Know how to apply a tourniquet. For splinting, use field expedients, a rifle stock, or a stick. This man is suffering from burns. Give him salt tablets and plenty of water. Basic procedure for shock is to keep the man comfortable. Loosen his belt and shoelaces. If he's cold, cover him. You may also be designated to remove the wounded from the field. The one-man carry can be used effectively. Emergency medical units moving in rapidly after the attack will soon take care of the overload of casualties. Following surface or underground bursts, the area will be contaminated for some time. Contamination may also occur in a small area immediately beneath an air burst. Unit monitors will locate the contaminated areas and mark them. This is your atomic contamination marker. Black Y on a white triangle, front view. Rear view. You will be told when you can enter safely into such an area and for how long. Have faith in your leaders. They will ensure that you do not get more radiation than is absolutely necessary. When you are required to remain in a contaminated area, you can reduce exposure to lingering radiation by scraping paths between positions. Scrape down the sides of your foxhole. Shovel out the floor. Your weapons and equipment may also be contaminated by radioactive fallout. If your immediate assignment requires their use, go ahead and use them. The risk from not carrying out your job will be more critical than the amount of radiation you get. You can decontaminate your equipment in the field by sweeping or scraping it down. There is no danger that your canned food will be radioactive. Wash off the can before opening it. Soap and water, the best way to decontaminate yourself and your equipment. Be particularly careful to remove the dust from those parts of the body covered by hair. And from under fingernails. Where necessary, decontamination units will be set up. Here you will be provided showers. 
you will be issued clean clothing. And you return to fight, not even a casualty. Miraculous? No. You survived because you understood the weapon, its effect of blast, heat, and nuclear radiation. You knew and applied properly your protective measures, individual field fortifications, counterintelligence including concealment, camouflage to deny the enemy target information. You help get information of the impending attack. You had a good warning system. During the attack, you took cover, the best cover available. Even when caught in the open. Afterwards, your first aid saved lives. Using your CBR training, you avoided undue exposure to lingering radiation. You quickly decontaminated your equipment and yourself. Yes, the atomic weapon is spectacular. It is potent, but it is not final or inescapable. It is another form of attack. As long as wars must be fought, soldiers are going to keep on fighting and living. Living and fighting, just as they always have. And as always, the odds will favor the man who knows. Today, the Army is training its soldiers against possible nuclear warfare. As you have seen, part of this training is to familiarize as many soldiers as possible with actual atomic detonations showing them the damage such weapons can inflict, and teaching them the most effective methods of defense against atomic attack. There is no minimizing the potency of the nuclear weapon, but today's soldier, well informed as to the nature of that weapon, and well trained in test explosions over the last few years, has a better chance of survival on the atomic battlefield. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the United States Army in cooperation with this station.